Here's a number that's breaking the internet right now. Swedish Air Force pilots become combat ready in Gripen fighters after just six months of training. American F-35 pilots. They need 18 months minimum. Some take over two years. Triple the time, triple the cost. And defense critics are having a field day with this statistic. They're calling the F-35 the most over-engineered mistake in military history. A stealth fighter so absurdly complex that turning pilots into operators takes longer than most college degrees. Social media is flooded with memes. Defense forums are exploding with arguments. And the narrative is spreading fast. America wasted trillions on a jet that's too complicated to even fly properly. But what if I told you both numbers are completely real and the comparison is totally meaningless? What if the real story reveals something far more critical about how modern air forces are preparing for wars that haven't been fought yet? Stick around, because what you're about to learn will completely change how you see fighter aircraft and military aviation training. Decoding the numbers. Let's establish the facts first without the propaganda or the hype. Sweden's Gripen E transition course takes six to eight months from start to finish. That timeline is verified by multiple sources, including official Saab defense briefings, Swedish Air Force documentation, and independent defense analysts who've studied their training programs. The F-35 syllabus runs 12 to 18 months for most pilots entering the program. The United States Air Force publishes these figures openly in their training command documentation. For certain variants like the F-35B with its complex vertical landing capabilities, training can extend even further depending on the pilot's prior experience and the specific mission sets they're being qualified for. So the gap is absolutely real. Nobody's making up these numbers. But here's the critical detail that everyone conveniently ignores when they're trying to make a political point or sell a narrative. These timelines aren't measuring the same thing at all, not even close. When Sweden says six months, they're talking about conversion training for already qualified fighter pilots. These aren't fresh recruits walking in off the street. These aviators have typically logged 500 to 1,000 flight hours in previous military aircraft. They've completed comprehensive air combat training. They understand tactical employment of weapon systems. They know threat reactions and defensive maneuvering. They've been through survival training and emergency procedures. The six months teaches them the Gripen specifically, the aircraft systems, the cockpit layout, the specific capabilities and limitations, the tactical employment unique to this platform, its advanced training for people who already know how to fight in fighter jets. The F-35 timeline is fundamentally different. It includes pilots from incredibly diverse backgrounds and experience levels. Some are coming from fourth generation fighters like the F-16 or F-A-18 and already have that tactical foundation. Others are coming from transport aircraft where they've never fired a weapon or performed air combat maneuvering. Some are coming from helicopters with completely different flying principles. Many are learning advanced sensor management, network-centric warfare, and information dominance concepts for the first time in their careers. The 18 months covers everything, absolutely everything, from basic aircraft handling and emergency procedures all the way through full mission capability in contested environments against peer adversaries. It's not just conversion training, it's comprehensive mission qualification. But even when you compare apples to apples and look at experienced F-16 pilots transitioning to each platform, the F-35 still takes substantially longer than the Gripen. And that difference tells you everything about what's actually happening in modern air combat that most people completely fail to understand. Why Gripen training works fast. The Gripen represents a specific philosophy of air power that's been refined over decades. It's a fourth generation plus multi-role fighter optimized for a very particular mission set, territorial defense of Swedish airspace in a potential Baltic conflict scenario involving Russian aggression. Sweden designed this jet with one absolutely brilliant concept in mind, survivability through dispersal. If enemy cruise missiles and ballistic missiles destroy every major airbase in the opening hours of war, the Gripen doesn't stop fighting. It doesn't become a useless piece of metal sitting in a destroyed hangar. It lands on highways. Sections of Swedish roads are specifically reinforced to handle fighter jet lanes and takeoffs. They're built into the national infrastructure as part of the defense plan. A six-person ground crew can refuel and rearm a Gripen in under 10 minutes using truck-mounted equipment. No massive logistics infrastructure. No specialized facilities. No vulnerable centralized bases that present easy targets for enemy strikes. Just trained personnel with basic equipment. Then the jet is airborne again 
operating from a different highway section, miles away from where it landed. The enemy has to hunt individual aircraft across an entire country, rather than destroying them all at centralized location. This operational concept drives everything about the aircraft design philosophy. The systems are proven and mature, technologies that have been tested in combat and refined over years of operational use. The cockpit interface prioritizes intuitive operation, so pilots can focus on tactics rather than wrestling with complicated menus. The avionics are sophisticated and effective, but focused on specific tasks rather than trying to do everything imaginable. Training reflects this focused design philosophy perfectly. Gripen pilots master radar operation for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes. They learn weapons employment for the specific munitions the aircraft carries. They practice tactical maneuvering and formation flying. They study electronic warfare fundamentals and how to operate in contested electromagnetic environments. But they're working with refined technology that's been debugged and improved over decades of development. There's no revolutionary sensor fusion requiring simultaneous management of 40 different data streams from satellites, ground stations, and networked platforms. No complex stealth shaping requiring constant awareness of your electromagnetic signature and aspect angles to enemy radars. No learning entirely new concepts of how air combat actually works. Experienced fighter pilots adapt quickly because the cognitive architecture matches what they already know from previous platforms. You're learning a new and very capable aircraft, not a completely new way of thinking about air combat and your role in it. The learning curve is steep, but it's climbing a familiar mountain. That's exactly why six months works for Sweden's needs. The F-35 Cognitive Revolution Now let's talk about what makes the F-35 fundamentally different from every fighter that came before it. This aircraft isn't designed to simply replace the F-16 or F-A-18 with a newer, faster, more maneuverable version of the same basic concept. It's designed to replace how we think about fighter operations entirely. It's a paradigm shift in air combat. The F-35's primary weapon isn't its AIM-120 missiles or its precision-guided bombs. It's information. The AN-APG-81 active electronically scanned array radar operates simultaneously in air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes while conducting electronic warfare and fusing external data sources. It creates a 360-degree spherical awareness picture that no previous fighter aircraft could generate on its own. Every single F-35 functions as a network node in a distributed combat system. It collects intelligence from satellites orbiting overhead, from ground-based radar stations, from AWACS early warning aircraft, from ships at sea, from other F-35s in the battle space. It synthesizes that data using incredibly powerful onboard processing capabilities. Then it distributes actionable intelligence to every friendly asset in range, including fourth generation fighters that can't generate this comprehensive picture themselves. Pilots who transition to the F-35 describe the experience as drinking from a fire hose. You're not just flying an aircraft, you're managing information flow for an entire strike package while simultaneously maintaining your own tactical situation and survival. The distributed aperture system provides spherical infrared coverage in all directions, meaning you see threats and targets in complete 360-degree awareness simultaneously. The electro-optical targeting system allows precision engagement at ranges where enemies don't even know you exist yet. Here's what completely breaks conventional wisdom about this aircraft. The F-35 is actually easier to physically fly than older fighter jets. Modern flight control computers handle stability automatically. The aircraft is more forgiving in unusual attitudes, not less. It's less likely to depart controlled flight or get into situations where pilot skill alone determines survival. But the mission systems create cognitive demands that simply didn't exist in previous fighter generations. You're learning electromagnetic spectrum management, understanding when to radiate your own sensors and when to stay electronically silent. You're prioritizing sensor fusion data stream, deciding what information matters most in rapidly changing tactical situations. You're coordinating network-centric kill chains across air, ground, and maritime domains simultaneously. This isn't traditional fighter pilot thinking where you track a few targets on radar and make tactical decisions based on visual range combat or beyond visual range missile shots. It's information warfare while flying supersonic. You're a battlefield quarterback managing multiple players and coordinating complex plays while under extreme pressure. The 18-month timeline teaches pilots to be these battlefield quarterbacks, not just aircraft operators who know how to fly and shoot 
and you absolutely cannot compress that learning curve without sacrificing the very capabilities that make the F-35 valuable. Your brain needs time to develop new neural pathways for processing information at this level. The Doctrine Divide This is where the comparison gets really interesting and reveals fundamental truths about military strategy. These training timelines expose two competing philosophies about future air combat that reflect completely different national strategy and threat assessments. Sweden's approach says this, build reliable, sustainable platforms that highly trained pilots can master efficiently and operate from anywhere under any conditions. Prioritize availability and tactical flexibility above cutting edge technology, accept certain limitations in stealth characteristics and the most advanced sensor fusion, compensate for those technological limitations with superior tactics, better operational training, and operational concepts specifically designed to exploit home terrain advantages and national infrastructure. America's approach says this, achieve such overwhelming technological dominance that traditional air combat becomes essentially irrelevant when every engagement through information superiority and first shot capability before the enemy even knows you're there. Fourth generation fighters, no matter how capable, cannot penetrate modern integrated air defense systems operated by peer adversary. Advanced systems like the Russian S-400 or Chinese HQ-9 detect non-stealthy aircraft at ranges exceeding 100 miles. The Gripen's radar cross-section, while reduced compared to older fighters, still makes it visible on modern radars the moment it's airborne. All that operational flexibility and dispersed capability means absolutely nothing if you're shot down before you can employ weapons effectively. You need stealth characteristics to survive in heavily contested airspace against peer adversaries with advanced air defenses and modern fighter aircraft. The F-35 solves the penetration problem through low observable design. It can operate inside enemy air defense envelopes without being detected until it's already accomplished its mission. But it requires functioning air bases with specialized maintenance facilities and complex logistics chains for parts, fuel, and weapons. Exactly the infrastructure that gets targeted first in any peer conflict. So you face an impossible strategic choice. Do you want operational flexibility without the survivability to use it? Or do you want survivability without the operational flexibility to maintain it? when your bases are destroyed. Neither philosophy offers a complete solution to modern air warfare challenges against capable adversaries. The force generation crisis. Here's the broader context that makes this entire debate urgently important right now, when half your strike package is autonomous and the other half is managing them remotely. And right now, in 2025, nobody knows exactly what that future war looks like with absolute certainty. We have incredibly detailed simulations. We have carefully written doctrine. We have well-reasoned theories from brilliant strategists. But we won't truly know until it actually happens in reality. The six-month versus 18-month debate is just a visible symptom of a much deeper question. The real issue is about the future nature of air combat itself and how technology is changing warfare faster than institutions can adapt. And that answer won't come from training syllabuses defense form, or comparative statistics. It'll come from the first major air campaign between peer adversaries with modern capabilities. And everyone in the defense community is praying we never have to find out the hard way. <laughs> if this breakdown gave you a completely different perspective on fighter training and what these numbers actually mean, smash that like button and subscribe for more analysis that goes beyond the headlines into what's really happening in modern military strategy and technology.